Imagine this, your air conditioner is powered by renewable energy. It also captures carbon dioxide from the air and converts it into energy to power your home, all while fighting climate change. If this sounds like something from the Jetsons, the technology to pull it off already exists, and a team of German and Canadian researchers have outlined exactly how it could work. In a small town in British Columbia, there's a giant fan sucking carbon dioxide directly out of the air. It's a direct air capture plant built in 2015 by the Canadian startup Carbon Engineering. In 2016, they started turning that carbon dioxide into liquid fuel. The success of Carbon Engineering gained a lot of attention in the media and the scientific community. Meanwhile, engineering professor Roland Dittmeyer had a thought. There are already millions of huge fans moving large volumes of air the HVAC systems used in high-rise buildings and industrial warehouses. With a little bit of retrofitting, those HVAC systems could form a decentralized network of carbon scrubbing, renewable fuel production. Dittmeyer and his team have dubbed their idea, Crowd Oil, Not Crude Oil, publishing their study in Nature Communications in April of 2019. And it comes at a time when the demand for solutions to address climate change and resource scarcity have never been greater. Cheddar's exploration into the global trend of finding innovative solutions that are seeking to identify new clean energy sources is brought to you by iShares. Why the focus on air conditioners? Right now, 10% of the world's global energy consumption is spent on cooling our homes and offices. By 2050, that number could triple. And as the world gets hotter, more people are going to need more air conditioning, releasing even more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and creating even more warming. So how would this crowd oil plan actually work? The HVAC system on your building would be retrofitted with a special filter. As the AC pulls the air in for cooling, the filter would absorb carbon dioxide from the air and collect the water that's produced as a byproduct of the cooling process. The air conditioner would also be fitted with an electrolyzer, which is a device that separates water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Then that hydrogen would go through a chemical reaction process with the captured carbon dioxide, resulting in a liquid hydrocarbon fuel that is chemically the same as petroleum-based fuel. The whole system would be about the size of a shipping container. How much power would this system be capable of generating? The scientists ran a quantitative analysis to figure this out using real-world buildings. In Germany's Frankfurt Fair Tower, the crowd oil system could remove up to one and a half tons of carbon dioxide per hour. In a year, it could produce between 2,000 and 4,000 tons of hydrocarbon fuel. If all of the office space in Frankfurt were fitted with this system, it could produce between 370,000 and 740,000 metric tons of fuel per year. Multiply that by the five cities with the most office space in Germany, and you get somewhere between 2.4 and 4.8 million metric tons of fuel per year. Adding the crowd oil system to the 25,000 stores in Germany's three biggest grocery chains would add 3 million metric tons of hydrocarbon fuels per year. That's enough to cover about 8% of Germany's annual diesel use, or 30% of its total yearly kerosene consumption. In a neighborhood of energy-efficient apartment buildings, crowd oil could produce enough fuel to power more than 1,000 cars for a year. As futuristic as this all sounds, this technology already exists. Pulling CO2 out of thin air, direct air capture, has been made commercially available by companies like Carbon Engineering in Canada and Skytree in the Netherlands, just to name a few. Companies like Siemens have commercialized the technology needed to generate hydrogen from water. And still other companies trade in the technology that turns hydrogen and carbon dioxide into fuels, like Interatech and Velasis. There are also companies working on even smaller versions of this technology so that smaller residential buildings could also become part of a crowd oil effort. And the retrofitting of HVAC systems to suck up CO2 has already been proven feasible and patented by engineers looking to reduce the amount of energy used by industrial HVAC systems. The researchers envision a system of personalized, localized, and distributed synthetic oil wells. The oil wells and the fuel in them can be tapped, shared, and stored with the option for the property owner to receive payment for any excess fuel fed into a renewable grid. Sounds great, right? Sign me up. I want to crank my AC in July guilt-free. Well, there are a couple of issues. 
First, there's the matter of all the electricity needed to power the capture and conversion process. The researchers stress it's not enough to just add electrolyzers to our air conditioners. The electricity used to power the ACs and the chemical reactions must come from non-fossil-based sources in order for the crowd oil idea to remain carbon neutral. Dittmeyer, the lead author, envisions something like wrapping buildings in photovoltaic skins and integrating that solar power into the process. Second, there's the issue of safely storing excess hydrocarbon fuels. These byproducts are volatile and toxic. One solution the researchers mention is storing the excess fuel in depleted oil wells, coal mines, and salt caverns. But they also recognize that safety and environmental issues, such as possible contamination of water supplies, would certainly have to be investigated. Then there's the issue of moral hazard. Moral hazard is a term from economics, and it basically means that when you feel protected from a risk, you don't have the incentive to guard against that risk anymore. In this case, the argument is that directing attention and resources to capturing carbon dioxide, rather than reducing our usage in the first place, will hinder us from reaching our carbon emission targets. But with those qualifications out of the way, there are reasons for optimism about the idea. Carbon capture has become more familiar to the public recently, but mostly on a big scale. Retrofitting power plants to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, convert it into gas, and store it deep underground. One problem with this approach is that it's expensive to set up and it doesn't produce a usable byproduct. It's hard to get companies and politicians to support something expensive that doesn't have an economic payoff. The crowd oil approach solves that problem because it comes with a revenue stream, renewable fuel. That economic incentive might help the idea gain traction. The authors are clear that their crowd oil system isn't a magic bullet. But if we want to stave off the worst consequences of climate change, we have about 30 years to reduce man-made greenhouse gas emissions to net zero. Renewable, carbon-neutral fuel could be an important method in helping us reach that goal. The social and economic impacts of climate change are substantial. As a result, new solutions to address finite resources continue to emerge, presenting opportunities to invest in companies that are focused on making a positive impact through energy efficiency, sustainable food systems, and scarce material alternatives. iShares ETFs provide investors with the opportunity to gain exposure to companies that may provide long-term growth across some of the trends that are shaping the way we work and live. To learn more about how you can use iShares ETFs to invest in something bigger, visit iShares.com slash megatrends. Visit iShares.com to view a prospectus, which includes investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information that you should read and consider carefully before investing. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the comments to let us know what you think the future of clean energy will be, and hit the bell icon to get notified next time Cheddar puts out a new video. We'll see you next time!